Hey guys, so this is a review of working with percentages. So if you want to check out the guided notes, they are free and available at divideandconquermath.com. Highly recommend them. So let's just jump right into it. So what does a percent mean? So what I mean is what, what does it mean to actually be X percent? Well, it has actually like a couple different ways you could look at it. So it's really saying X over 100 or it's, you know, X is that part of 100. So X is the part of 100. So the thing I want to remind you of first is how to convert from percents to decimals. So I have these examples here that we're just going to jump right into. So basically when you have a percent, so you can always just pick up where is the decimal and sometimes it might be invisible. And then you really just want to move it to to the left to turn it into a decimal. So in this case, 34% is equal to 0.34. Or in the case of 122%, I just move it over two. So this would be equal to 1.22. So what would be the case for C? Maybe you wanna pause and think about it for a second. So in this case, here's the decimal. So I'm gonna move it over one, two spots. So this is going to be equal to point, uh, so zero, Point, sorry, let me just write that again. 0 0.0457 would be that one. Okay, and so now let's go the other way. So how do I convert from a decimal to a percent? Well, I literally just go the opposite direction now. So now I identify where is the decimal. So let's see, I'll use this color. And I'm just going to move now to the right. So in this case, I'm going to move 1, 2 to the right. So as a percent, this would be 5.2%. So maybe you want to pause here and try these other two and then hit play when you're ready. So for B, I'm going to move this over two to the left. So this is 99.5%. And then for C, I'll move this one, two spots over. So this is going to be equal to 0.078%. So it's always two spots. So you might still end up having a decimal as your percent. That's totally okay. Okay, so the last thing I just want to bring up here is what about fractions? How do fractions relate back to percentages? So if you don't have a calculator and you don't know these off the top of your head, there's a couple different ways that you can do this. So one way is that if you just actually want to set up the long division, you can. So in this case, you could have like four going into three. So you know that that's not going to happen. But what you can do is you can basically set up this decimal and then you could say, well, how many times would four go into 30? P pretend that decimal is not there. So four would go into 30 up to seven times. So I'm just going to transfer this decimal up here. So seven times four is 28. So I'm going to write that as 2.8 instead. But just, just pretend like it's the, the regular number here. So 30 minus 28 would be two. So I just, again, carrying that decimal down. So you can just keep going with this until you get to that decimal approximation. So I'm going to add another zero here and carry that zero down. And then how many times does four go into 20? Well, that would be five times. So five times four is 20. So I'll just go ahead and once again, I'm just carrying the decimal through. And so now I've got no remainder. So this would be the decimal approximation. That's one way that you can do this. Or let me get rid of this and I'll show you the other way. The other way that you can think about this is you could just think if, if you notice that the denominator easily goes into 100, you can kind of convert this into that. Uh, so remember what this looked like, this X part of 100, you can actually figure out kind of what the decimal is that way. So for instance, if I multiply four by, 20, uh, by 25, I'll get to 100, right? So if I multiply the top and bottom by 25 like this, I get, 75 over 100. And so then that would tell me then that my decimal is just 0.75. So either way that you want to do it is fine. If you want to pause the video and try that for part B, go for it. So for part B, um, so if I want to just use the fraction way, so I could take 3 fifths times 20 over 20. So this is going to give me 60 over 100. So that would mean that my decimal is 0.60. Or if you actually did the long division, then this would be the answer that you got. So this way works if your denominator will definitely and easily go into 100. If that doesn't work, then you'll have to use the long division. 
So now I want to just talk to you about a couple of kind of like the, the most basic way we can kind of bring up a, a percent. So questions like find 34% of 87. Now, if you've watched my videos before, um, you'll know that the word of is a special math word. The word of indicates multiplication. So this means multiplication. So actually this sentence is a direct translation, 34% of 87. So first of all, what is 34% as a decimal? That's 0.34. And then of means multiply and then just 87. So there's what you're being asked to do. So then you can multiply those together and you'll get 29.58 when you multiply those together. So if I did that again for B here, so it's literally the same idea. So just a, a slightly different way of asking the same question. What is 17.5% 17, 17 of 32? So that's going to be 0.175 times 32. And if you multiply those together, you will get 5.6. Okay, so now let's go a slightly different direction. So now 12 is what percent of 36? Okay, so this one actually is telling you, or it's asking you to figure out what percentage of this this is. So this is, this is a slight deviation in how we're asking this. This is talking about 12 as being part of the whole. So in this context, the way that you're actually thinking of this is 12 being part of the whole. 12 is part of this 36. So here would be the actual problem that you would figure out. And you might notice in this case that this can actually be reduced to one third. And that is going to be the decimal 0.33. So that's 33%. So sometimes that'll work out for you. And so another way I could ask that same question, what percent of 18 is three? So again, this is referring to the idea that three is part of the whole of 18. So it's the same idea, three over 18. Once again, in this case, this actually reduces to one over six. And then that would come out to 0.167 uh, repeating. That actually goes on for forever. But that's kind of the, the setup and that's how you, how you would do it. So. That's it for this video. Like I said, just a really quick review. I have other videos about word problems and, and good stuff like that. So thanks for watching guys. I'll catch you next time.